we're talking about um, multiplying decimals. And the reason I chose to do this lesson, I'm going to see if I'm even calibrated here. On the eight minute test we took last week, okay, there was a problem like this. And I don't want anyone to say the answer, okay? But there were two kids in fifth grade that got it right. And I can't remember which two they are. I'll look it up later. Okay, I think there were two. And so I decided, I think I better review this with my fifth graders real quick so they completely understand it. Now, part of it's my fault because what module did I skip a lot of lessons in? Four. Module four, because I said, hey, you can multiply these fractions easily. You don't need to do a whole lesson on it. But I picked lesson 17 because, yeah, you really need to do this one. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So everyone write this down. One half times one third. Write that down on your black, blank piece of paper. This what actually started in lesson 13. Module 4, lesson 13. And remember, I skipped those because I said, oh, I can just teach them the strategy. Okay, so... What I need now is an area model to show this. So you're going to need an area model. Yeah. And what word can I substitute with the multiplication sign? Oh, so oh. So this is what I want to think. Half of one third. So I'm going to put one third on there first. Not one half. I'm going to put one third on there first. So I'm going to do one third like this. And I'm going to shade one out of three. And then at the bottom, I'm going to mark one third. Now I'm doing half of one third, right? Yeah. By the way, what's the answer to this? Six. One sixth, okay? So if I'm doing half of one third, let's shade it, shape, or uh, divide it in half. Hurry up, divide it in half. And then when you shade um, half, you're going to cross the other way. And you're going to shade the whole bottom half, just like we did in the old days when we shaded. And I would show this as one half on the side. Okay? So what was my answer when I did my answer earlier? What was it? One, one sixth. Six. Is that what my model shows? Does my model show one sixth? Okay, so that's what I skipped. Why did I skip that? Because we were running out of time to get ready for assessments. And I thought, if this if I can skip these models, it's going to go a lot faster in class, okay? Because then you won't have to draw in class. But I want you to know what it represents, what it, what it looks like to do half of one-third, okay? And this first page is just a review of multiplying fractions. And I'm going to pull six. I'm going to give you a few... Oh, maybe a minute or less to get started, and then we'll pull sticks. And whoever's name I call, you can just do a whole row. You can give me the answers for a whole row, okay? So go ahead and get started. Okay, so the, the first row, Jair, would you like to tell us the answers, please? Uh, one sixth. Okay. And two fourths, which is six of five to the next. All good. And... Very good. Hey, Dara. Row two. Good. So this is pretty simple stuff, isn't it? Yes. Cheney. Uh, one tenth. <clears throat> two ninths and six twelfths equals one half. Good. So I feel pretty good about your knowledge of how to work with fractions, don't you? Mm -hmm. George V, help us with the next one. Three. Okay. Two 
Okay. What? 250. 2 times 2. Oh, 4. Good job. And? Okay, now this one I can simplify. Okay, so what did you divide by? 6. 6, very good. <coughs> Okay. Add the L. Um, three twelves. Can I simplify that? Yes. Divide by what? Three. Good. So what is it simplified? One, four. Good. Then nine twentieths. Okay. Then fortieths. And then you can divide that by four, ten. And you get uh, one four. Good. Okay. Very good. Okay, on this page, it says say the fraction, write the decimal. So let's go ahead and look at the first one. Everyone read this fraction to me. One tenth. So all I do is write one tenth. So I would say 2 tenths equals 0 0.2. Think you can handle that? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is cadence. Help me with the rest of these cadence right here. Okay. Um, 0 0.8, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. Okay, say all those fractions for me just so I can yeah. make sure. 3 tenths, 7 tenths. Good. And 8 tenths. And 8 tenths. Okay. So the next one, Vaughn, would you do these for me, please? Yeah. Tell me the fraction. Oh, oh, one and one hundred. One hundred equals. Zero point one. I knew what you meant. Okay. Do the next one, Vaughn. Two hundreds equals. Zero point zero two. Okay. Seven hundreds equals zero point zero seven. Mm -hmm. And nine hundred equals zero point zero nine. Very good. Okay. So this is for me. Is he here? Okay. Okay, so what's this fraction? Say it for me. No, tell me the fraction. Twelve hundredths. Good. Okay. Tell me the next fraction. How do I write it? Good. So, I feel pretty confident that you're going to be able to take a decimal and turn it into a fraction, or a fraction and turn it into a decimal. Okay, let's look at these down here. So, you're going to say the decimal, then write the fraction. So, Lexi, it would be 100 equals 1 over 100. Okay, tell me the next one. <coughs> um, say the decimal. 300 equals, equals 3 over 100. Okay? All right, do the next one. Um, 9 hundredths equals 9 over 100. Good. You're ready, Ed? 11 hundredths equals 11 over 100. Good. 87 hundredths equals 87 over 100. Okay. So that's pretty much a review of how to write those. Now we're going to try some multiplication problems. Now, we're going to multiply times powers of 10. Okay? So what do I mean when I say powers of 10? Oh, let's read them. 1, 10, 10 10. 000, 000. So it would be 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third. Okay, now we haven't dealt with this over here, have we? And we're not going to deal with the negative exponents, but we are going to deal with multiplying times a tenth and a hundredth and a thousand. So these right here are actually powers of 10 also. We just haven't used the exponents with them, and we're not going to. Stop interrupting. Remember, I'm recording. Okay? So we're not going to use the exponents with them, but we are going to use them as powers of 10 starting today. So if I were to take a look at 2 times 1 tenth, 
I could rewrite it as 2 times 1 tenth, okay? And we're not going to rewrite all of these. But I just want to get you thinking about this, okay? So 2 times 1 tenth would be 2 tenths. Did my place value change? No. no, it didn't. And if I were doing this times a fraction, a whole number times a fraction, here's what I would do in my mind. 2 times 1 over 10, which equals 2 tenths, and then I would just write 2 tenths. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we're going to get to that a little bit later. But just mm -hmm. tell me answers, boys and girls. So we get to the 20. Okay, tell me answers to the 20. Okay, so just tell me how to say it. 3 tenths? 4 tenths. Wait, is that faster than I can write? How do I write it? 0 Good. 0 Okay. That's where the easy part stops. And now we're going to start thinking about this on a place value chart. So, what was that problem that you, you guys <coughs> kind of crashed and burned on? Well, most of fifth grade crashed and burned on it. Keep that in mind, okay? Don't say anything yet if you figured it out. All right? So, I want you to go to your place value chart. I think mine's my next page. Let me see. A couple pages away. Okay? And I want to write 20 on here. Now, in my opinion, this place value chart is missing a line right here. So if you want to draw a line, just draw a line. Okay? So I'm going to put the number 20 on there. That's what I want you to do. Okay? And I don't want you to um, write this next thing down. Okay? I'm going to take you back to module 1, and I want you to um, just think about how we originally learned this. So if I take the number 20... How many of you are still drawing the line? Go ahead, finish it. Got to finish? Okay. All right. So if I take 20 times 100, remind me what happens, and I don't want you to write this yet, okay? Remind me what happens on my place value chart. Someone who was here in uh, the first lesson of fifth grade. That was all of you, right? Okay. So first lesson of fifth grade, what happens when I take 20 times 100 on the place value chart? What oh, happens? It goes to the right. You, you move it to the right. left. Okay? The decimal hop, we go to the right, but I'm not talking about the decimal hop right now. Okay? So I would have done how many place values to the right? Two. Two. How did you come up with two? Two plus two. Two. It's 10 to the second power. Very good. Okay? So 10 to the second power <coughs> means I move the two here. Move the zero, right? Mm -hmm. Then I fill in with zero. two zeros, okay? Do not write this because that's just, oh, and what do we write up here? Times. Times. Times 100. Or times 10 to the second power, okay? So that's a little walk down memory lane. Everybody remember that? Okay. So what happens then if I go across the decimal for my powers of 10? What if I am taking it times one tenth? Do I still move to the left? Yes. Well, let me put this in perspective for you. Is one tenth more or less than one whole? Less. So if I take 20 times more, I'm going to get 20, right? What if I take 20 times less than one? I'm going to get less than 20, aren't I? Okay. So, on the powers of 10 that are fractions, and actually they're negative powers of 10, does that make sense? Because my negative numbers go across zero the other way, right? Would it make sense that my negative powers of 10 would go across the decimal? No. Yeah? So, I'm going to take this times 1 tenth. And I'm going to write times 1 tenth. And I'll move my zero. And I'll move my 2. So everybody write that right now. <clears throat> and you don't have to worry about those negative exponents. I just want you to know that when you take 20 times a number less than 1, you're going to end up with less than 20. And I'll show you what this looks like on 
an area bottle here in a minute. Okay? So, what did we get for an answer? 2.0. 2.0, which is the same thing as 2. Okay? So, my answer here on this next one is going to be... What do you think I'm going to write here? You're close. 20 tenths. And then I'm going to write 20 tenths, right? Mm -hmm. But I need to cross that zero off because I do not need it. Okay? And if you are good enough that you just know not to write it from the very beginning, that's fine. But as long as you cross it off, I will know that you know what you're talking about. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I take 20 times 100, I'm going to get what as a fraction? 20 hundredths. And that's going to give me 20 hundredths, right? But I can cross off the zero. So let's keep practicing and then we're going to go back to this problem from your eight minute test. So now, Let's pull sticks here. So what would my fraction be right here, Chloe? Um, well, I want to know my fraction first. So 30 over what? 30 over... Good. And she says it's 3.0. And cross off the zero. Do you agree? Yeah. Is that why you write 30 tenths? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So the next one, Emily, what would my fraction be? Good. And how do I write my answer? So my answer is three what? Three tenths. Okay. How many of you think you can do this problem now? Okay, so how would you do it, you ready? Okay. So rewrite it as a fraction for us, you ready? You agree? I had all kinds of answers. Yeah, I know. Is there any reason to do turtle head multiplication on a problem like that? No, because you're dealing with a power of 10. And when you're dealing with a power of 10, it's a decimal placement. Of course, you might have to multiply 5 times 1, but that's simple enough, isn't it? Okay, so let's do the next one. 80 times 100, Miguel. Okay. Good. Or well, don't even write it if you realize it in time, right? Okay. The next one, how sway? Eighty tenths. How am I gonna write eighty tenths? What do you say I did? Huh? Or just say, okay, you're going to have to speak loud enough for me to hear you. George A, you kind of got a challenging one, so probably the fraction. You guys agree? Yeah. Remember, the last digit you write is in the place value that you, that is mentioned. Beverly, what, what is my fraction on the next one? Okay, how do I write 8,200? You don't want the recording to pick up your voice, do you? Is that why you're talking so quietly? You were right. Hey, sis. Okay, so I'm sticking them back in. Add the up. Would you, you do the next one, please? Good. You kind of got an easy one, didn't you? Vaughn? Right here, 53 times 1 Good. 
Good job. Is the three in the tenth place? You're ready yet? And Chloe. Um, What's he say? Okay, very good. All right, so how do you feel about this problem that messed us up on our eight minute test? Mm -hmm. I know. I think part of the problem is it's been so long since we worked with decimals, changing them to fractions. Okay, so this application problem is a good one. So what I want to do is I want to read it, and then we're going to talk about what to draw before you ever try and do any math in your head. Can you handle that? Okay. So Miss Casey grades four tests during her lunch. She grades one third of the remainder after school. If she still has 16 tests to grade after school, how many tests are there? Now, this is what I said in block one. I'm pretty sure the answer is purple because aliens don't wear hats. Mm -hmm. And you know what Marco said? But aliens can wear hats, Mrs. And I said, I know. So this is really confusing because I have no idea what the answer is. So then I went and looked at the answer key. Don't you love how I teach now? Yeah. Okay. So, what could I draw that just talks about the total tests? Not the 16, not the one third. How many tests are graded so oh, far that we know for four. sure? Okay. So we've got four tests that are graded. Correct? Mm -hmm. And here's our question mark. This is how many are left to grade after lunch, correct? Okay, so what is left to grade after lunch? One third plus 16. Now the problem with this is I don't know my total so I don't know if it's one third of whatever. So let's read, let's do another take diagram for just this leftover part right here. Because that's going to make it easier for us. Don't write any question mark. Oops, that's supposed to be a one third, not a thirteen. And this is, so does this show one third plus sixteen? Yes. It does. So talk with your table group. Do it quietly so no one hears you. But how can we figure out what goes in each box? Talk with your table groups. Okay. So I'm going to pull a stick and that table is going to tell me what they talked about, okay? Please don't be our table. Janie's table. Uh, Listen. Do we like do or like sixteen thirds? Sixteen copies of one third? Yeah. Good idea. George A, what did your table discuss? Um sixteen divided. Sixteen divided by one third. How many of you thought of that idea? Okay. It's a good idea. Jair's table. What did you guys discuss? 16 divided by one third. Dara, what did your table discuss? Okay. So all of you are pretty much coming up with the 16 and the one third. You've got to do some sort of math with them, right? Okay, what if I asked you this question? What's my denominator? Three. How many equal parts do I need? Three. Now, I'll talk with your table group about what you think goes in each box. Don't say it wrong. For me, asked his table a question. He said, what would add up to 16? Eight. Eight. 
How many of you said eight goes in the box? Mm -hmm. Good thinking. Mm -hmm. So I have a total amount of tests she graded after lunch. How many did she grade after lunch? No. Eight. Four. 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 Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So she graded twenty-four after lunch. Only eight of those were graded during the school day. Then she had 16 left after school, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. So the total amount of tests she graded, I'm going to fall sick. Chloe, what do you think it is? Um, Can I get you going on the right track here? What was this? Um, one third. Lexi, how many tests are there? Um, 28. You got it. Cadence, is that what you were going to say? 28. Where'd you get your 28, Lexi? Uh, I added 24 plus 4. 24 plus 4. Total amount of tests to grade was 28. So there were, that's not going to be seven words. There were 28 tests. Total. How many words is that? Only five. five. That's okay. We can come up with a five. Uh, five word sentence at the end of fifth grade. We're okay with that. Because we have one week of school left, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's a good problem. I like that problem. Let's look at the lesson for today. Okay. So you are going to need your place value chart just for the first three problems. I mean, problem one, A, B, C. Okay? And then, after that, we're going to show it on an area model. Okay, so let's go ahead and put two sets of equal signs. No, change my mind. Rewrite this as a, a fraction times a whole number first. So it's going to be... One tenth times what? Four. And then put two sets of equal signs. Okay? Get it set up like that because that's going to help us in the future on problems later on today. Okay? All right. So now, what fraction do I need to write next to one tenth times four? We did this on the other. Page. What is it? Four and then I'm going to rewrite that as a decimal. Now, here's something you've got to know about this. When working with powers of 10, you do not want to simplify your fraction. So you're going to have to stop yourself there. Why would I want to change this to a 5 when I'm dealing with powers of 10? I don't, do I? No, I don't. I want to change it to a decimal, so I'm going to leave it as a 10, 100, or a 1,000. What? Yes. Okay, so let's rewrite the, wait, I'm going to put that on a place value chart. Let's see what it looks like. So we've got four, correct? Everybody write a four. Times one tenth, what does it look like on a place value chart? And we got four tenths for our answer, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, we're just going to do three of those on a place value chart. Okay, next. We write this as a fraction times a whole number, whole sway. What do I need to write? And equals equals. Okay? For me, what fraction do I need to write for my answer? Two tenths. And how do I write that as a decimal? And let's put it on the place value chart. So the 2 goes in what place value? The 10. Starts out with 1's, doesn't it? Because oh, yeah. it, is it 2 whole? Okay. So then we're taking it times what? One ten. Times 1 10. And it becomes 2 tenths. Okay. Let's do the last one. It's a little different. 
So we write that, Beverly, as a fraction times a whole number. 1 over 100 times 6. Okay, and two sets of equal signs. Abdiel, what is my answer as a fraction? Uh, 6 over 100. Good, and how do I write that as a decimal? 0.06. Good, let's put it on the place value chart and we'll be done with that. Okay, so I started out with a 6, right? Yep. What did I take at times? 100. 100. How many place values do you think that is? 2. 2. So times 100 equals 600. So now the place value chart, you don't have to fill in with zeros. That's just when you write it. Okay, so how do you feel about showing it on a place value chart? Yes. This to five, you're five. Okay. All right, let's take a look at problem two, A, B, and C. It's a little different. Whoa. And I'm going to pass out some of these decimal models for you to use. So what I want to do now, this looks to me like it's a decimal times a decimal. Correct? Yep. And if I were to rewrite that as a fraction times a fraction, it would look like one-tenth times one-tenth. Correct? And then we would do equals equals. Okay? Now, I already know that you know the answer, but how do I show the answer? That's the question. So you're going to shade one tenth. And at the bottom, what fraction will you write? One tenth. One tenth. And then what are you what are you multiplying it by? By one tenth. By one tenth. So then you're going to shade. Make sure you go the other way. Now here's how you need to write it. You're writing it a little differently, so once you get it shaded. I'm pretty sure my answer is going to be right down here, don't you think? Okay. So here's what I'm doing. I'm taking 1 times 1 and 10 times 10. Write that down. And is this um, 100? Yes. Did it, does it show 100 on here? Yes. Are there 100 boxes on this? Yeah, because we know 10 times 10, right? Yes. So how would I write that as a decimal? Zero point zero. Okay. So that's what it looks like on an area model. Let's rewrite B as a fraction times a fraction. So tell me what to write, Miguel. Oh, um, 2 tenths times 1 tenths. Okay. So get that written down. Equals, equals, equals. Okay, so this means two tenths of one tenth. So what do I start with? Two tenths. I'm going to start with one tenth. Remember, I started with my second number. It works out better that way. And at the bottom, I'm going to mark one tenth. And I'm going to take it times two tenths. Two tenths. No. How are you doing? Okay, so now, what goes on my long line, do you think? I'm going to pull a stick. Vaughn, what do you think goes on my long line? Well, over here, I took 1 times 1 and wrote it down. So what do you think Ten I'm going to write? 2 times 1. And? 10 times 10. Good. And that? 2... Two hundredths, and how do I write it as a decimal? Very good. Getting the hang of this? Oh, no. 
What's wrong with the next one? It's all dirt. Oh. Let's just do it numerically. Okay. Why do I say that? Because, because um, we don't have enough one. It was zero. We would have to use two because this yeah. represents one hole. Yeah. And we've got more than one, so we're not going to mess with it. So let's rewrite it as a fraction times a decimal. But in a stick, there's a trick here. George V. I know it's tenths place. What do I write on top of that? Oh, oh, twelve. A twelve. Oh. So twelve times twelve tenths times one tenth. Equals twelve tenths. Okay, so I'm going to do twelve times one, ten times ten. You want to change your answer, Kate? Yes. Okay. What do you think the answer is? Twelve. Good. How do I write that as a decimal? I mean, zero point zero point one two. Awesome. Okay, we're going to keep going. We'll solve these numerically. So no models, no place value charts. So let's just solve them. So rewrite it as a fraction times a fraction. Emily, first one. Okay. What goes on top of the line, Emily? And? Good. Uridia. What's the answer to this one? Good. How do I write that as a decimal? Very good. Okay. Cadence. Rewrite this as a fraction times a fraction. Five tenths times one hundred. Good. What goes on top of the long line, Kate? I pulled your stick again. What? I know, I just put them all back in and I, hers was the first one I pulled. Five so what, what goes on top? Five tenths. Okay, so that's going to be, Emily, what's my answer? Um, Good. Okay, let's get to one more problem, or as many as we can do in the next few seconds. So look at, how's this different? Do I still have powers of 10? No. Yes. No, I don't. I don't, because I've got a 2 there in the tens place, okay? Can I think of it the same way, though, with the decimal? I can. So I would write this as 7 times 2 tenths equals, equals, equals. And I'm going to put 7 times 2. And it would be 10 times 1, wouldn't it? <coughs> But I don't need that one. I can just know. So this will be 14 tenths. How do I write 14 tenths as a decimal? How do I write it? 1.4. How are you doing? Good. Okay. All this goes in the sorter, and we'll do the problem set tomorrow.